Um, how many wet Sunday afternoons can come one cope with, do you think? I think it always feels like that to me between Christmas and New Year is that the, the days just continue in the same theme once you've got over Christmas Day. Maybe Boxing Day, I don't know. Dep I suppose it depends on um, how many people you're visiting, how many guests you've got, if you've got guests coming. I mean, it's, I don't think it's like that with COVID anyway. But um, yes, it's another wet Sunday afternoon. <sighs> and tomorrow there's a little bit of a break in the monotony, monopony, monopoly, monotony. Um, I've got a blood test in the morning. There's something else, something else happening. Oh, I can't remember what it is anyway. I've got a blood test in the morning, so we will have to get in the car and go out. We've not been out since we came back on Christmas Day. <clears throat> um, which is fine. I quite like not having to go out. And um, the restaurant... The new restaurant um, nearer to us is San Savan that um, uh, in my San Savan video, there's, I take um, video of it from outside the, the you know, new building on the end of the, um, the Abbey. I've just noticed them advertising their San Silvestre um, menu. San Silvestre is uh, New Year's Eve. And um, it's 140 pounds euros per person. And then it made me go back and look and see what we paid for our meal on Christmas Eve. And that was 79 euros a person, which I hadn't quite taken in. It was naughty, really, but I didn't. But yeah, and I looked through the menu. I thought, oh, that looks familiar. That looks very similar to what we had the other night. Oh, that looks familiar. Lots of similar things on that menu. And I'm sort of thinking based on information that I noticed as I was um, looking before we booked our meal is that the chef that was at Les Orangeries um, left and went to the, the new place in saint Savan. So I don't know how long they've had the chef at Les Orangeries. And I know that when we were going years ago to Les Orangeries, the chef there, David Royer, um, left just before um, the, the Christmas that we went four years ago. So I don't know how many chefs they've had in between and, and I don't know whether that's an issue for them. Anyway, 140 euros per person. <clears throat> I think we'll be having jam sandwiches on New Year's Eve. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I've been um, looking more at the ceiling, which I'm going to try and show you. I know that you've seen it in some of the stuff that I do. This, that's the ceiling. And it's, it goes on and on forever. And it goes on into the kitchen. Um, and it's got to come down this year. And trying to work out what we would put there instead. It's, I don't like it. It's quite typically French. It's not typically French to have it painted white. We, it, well, it isn't, wasn't white. When Mark painted it, which took him forever, it was, um, what was the colour? I think the colour was parchment. And um, so the beams got painted and the, in, the slats in between, the slats in between were brown. And um, I don't know what they're going to, what we'll get builders in obviously to do it. And I don't know what they'd put up there instead. I mean, my thoughts are that they would put um, plasterboard up there, but I don't understand why it's done like that. Though, with those, I think they come in, in, in lengths. It looks to me like they come in, um, I don't know, meter lengths and, and then they're put up and then there's beading either side to hold them up. It, I really don't understand it and the you know there's areas where they've dropped there's areas where there are holes and because we have at least two Leros living up there if not three um it's pretty it's disgusting I know it's disgusting um and I know that 
before we begin to replace it, that that has to come down. And, and when that comes down, whoever is bringing it down is going to need to be wearing a mask and some protective clothing because it's horrible. And I'm hoping that bringing it down will get rid of the Lero problem. Although I will, when I'm next out shopping and when I remember, look for mothballs. And I think we're going to shove mothballs up there to try and deter them. I think what's made me think about it more is that, you know, watching that rat running across from the hotel and talking to you about vermin. And um, we don't think about the Leros as vermin. I don't know why, because they're... I don't know why. Because actually... I don't know what vermin are classed as. I must look. But, you know, they are, aren't they? It's just they're living in the ceiling. They've been there ever since we've been here. You know, we've been here um, 15 years. And I, I don't remember. Yeah, I do remember, actually. I do remember hearing noises when we were in the other bedroom um, in the Grenier because we were next to the Grenier at that end and I could hear noises in there. And they can be really noisy, um, not not sort of squeaking or anything, but if they're, um, I don't know, bringing in walnuts or something and rolling them along the floor. People have joked about, you know, it sounds like they're dragging a suitcase across the floor or something. So they can be really noisy. And um, yes, they've got to go. And I really don't know. I know that if we get um, a builder come round and have a look, that they will know um uh, you know, a French builder, if they come around, they'll know what they would do. Um, I hope that they wouldn't want to replace like for like, because I really don't like the, the like for like. And this continues into the kitchen, so it would have to, these two rooms would be out of commission. Um, all, everything, we'd have to clear everything away. And we sort of worked out that we would um, take the microwave upstairs and We've got a door, you know, we can go out of stairs and out the door, so we don't have to come in through here. And um, I think we'll just have to live upstairs whilst they're doing it. And I'd seal it off with um, polythene so the dust and everything doesn't go through. But I'm not looking forward to it. I'm not looking forward. To it. I hate the disruption of building work. Um, we've not had any building work here. Oh, we did. We had the roof done. Over 10 years ago now, we had the roof done um, and it was a massive roof. And um, because the um, the owner of the company um, snapped his Achilles tendon playing football, there was a month gap where there was nobody here. So we had a half made move roof with a with a month gap, or there was a month when just one of the the guys was working on his own, and it was this time of year, and I think there was very heavy frost or snow on the ground, so it wasn't pleasant for him. But they were here sort of overall they were here for about four months and I know they weren't indoors they were outdoors but you're constantly sort of um on guard or you know sort of available or or whatever you can't just ignore the fact you've got people wandering around on your roof or in your garden it was a damned expensive job and we have Mary to thank for that she's honestly she was amazing I don't know how she managed to have so much money, but she did. So yeah, we did it. That was about ten years ago. Um, so that's the ceiling. Don't know what ideas you might have. Um, there was something else I was going to ask, and I can't remember what it is now. Something else I was thinking about. I know. I was thinking about what job did you end up doing. Um, for most of your life and what job did you want to do but didn't get to do I think I was thinking that I was probably watching uh, the Highland Midwife as I do sometimes because when I started my nurse training I had every intention of training to be a midwife and um, I would even now I'd find it if somebody uh, sort of if, you know, if I was of working age and somebody said okay here are your choices I still think I'd find it hard to char uh, to char uh, choose. So I ended up working as a psychiatric nurse, which some people would say is nowhere near being a midwife. I think perhaps there's quite a lot of crossovers of those two professions, but I would have loved to have um, helped women in childbirth. And um, I really, 
I don't regret. I don't regret not doing uh, not doing that. But I, yeah, I wish I'd had an opportunity to do that. And then I watched something else. I watched something else the other day on telly, and I think, oh, I wish I could have done that. And of course, it's all you know. You can't. You can only have one life. You can't choose. Oh, okay. I'm going to go back. I, I mean, I wouldn't want to go to work anyway. Now, I oh God, I don't miss getting up for work. I haven't missed it all these years, and I don't miss it. But yeah, I would have. I think I would have liked to have been a midwife. No, I know I would have liked to have been a midwife. Had I become a midwife, I wouldn't have met Mark. So um, it has big pluses that I didn't end up training to be a midwife. Anyway, back to wet, boring Sunday afternoon. It reminds me of um, a radio program um, in the UK, an old radio program called, I don't know whether it was called that then, Hancock's Half Hour. It might have been called that or something else, but um, it's very clever, a very clever um, half hour of him um, sitting on a Sunday afternoon in, I think he lived in a flat or, and he'd got other people living with him or there were lodgers or they were in lodgings and, and they'd had their um, they'd had their Sunday lunch and um, he was just bored. And when he's bored, he's like a child that's bored. And he kept asking what the time was and kept sighing heavily about the weather because it was a wet Sunday afternoon. Um, so it reminds me a bit of that. Anyway, I hope you're having a, a lovely day if you're still celebrating Christmas. And um, yeah, enjoy it.